you guys real quick. So this is just like a real quick intro to the Real Talk video because it was already filmed yesterday. However, yesterday evening, I did have to come out of character and address someone here on YouTube, um, some, some, some ones here on YouTube that I'm really not too fond of. However, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that are not too fond of these two women, which go around like two cackling hens, ridiculing and humiliating everyone. Now, mind you, yesterday as I was scrolling through YouTube, I did notice my video on someone's thumbnail. Lo and behold, it was Lioness, whatever her name is, from the Cloud Chasers. So she went and took her phone and recorded one of my videos from the computer just to basically try to humiliate me or poke fun at me on YouTube by talking about the gray silver wig that I reviewed. Also talking about that I don't have a uterus and all of this shit. Like, so what? Who gives a fuck if I don't have ovaries or whatever? I've had my share of kids, so so what? But not only that, she says that I'm old looking. I look like, you know what I'm saying? I'm older than her. Anyway, but that was the first video that I noticed that she did until today when I'm scrolling through YouTube again and I come across two other videos that are on their main channels, Clout Chasers, that they recorded of me last, that they, they talked or spoke about me last week. Listen, let me tell you something. Yeah, I came out of character yesterday for these two raggedy ass bitches because you know what? You're not about to disrespect me on any platform. I don't give a damn who you are. You can't get mad when you talk about people like they're trash. And then when people react to your videos, the comments are open. I can say whatever I want to say in the comment section of anyone's video. You lucky it wasn't your video, Jackie or Quenisha. You lucky it wasn't one of your videos. However, if I do want to say something about your particular video and your videos, I'm going to do so. I'm going to do that. However, don't give you no right to get mad about what I say about you or anybody else on here, but it's okay for you to go talking about people. Listen, let me tell you something to women, okay? Gargoyles, freaking living, walking dead, looking ass Jackie. Let me tell you something. I'm not about to come out of character again for you because you're definitely not worth my time. Like, look at you. You look like you're walking death. I'm not about to sit here and scream and holler about you, nor your daughter, Quanisha, who looks like she runs a little slow mentally, okay? Meanwhile, she's sitting next to Fat Daddy back with Billy, okay? And you want to sit up here and judge me. I'm definitely not about to come out of character and hoop and holler. Not today, I'm not, but I'm going to let y'all know this. As long as y'all continue with your negative energy to anybody, they're going to come for you guys. Like, you should take a look in the mirror, the both of you, before you decide to talk about anybody, before you even think to talk about anybody. You know what I'm saying? Think about what you guys look like. Look, think about what you look like. Think about what your baby daddy look like. You know what I'm saying? Think about what your whole family look like. Think about what you live in. You guys live in a freaking movable, mobile roach motel. Like, let's be serious. Jackie, yours may be a little bit more neater and up-to-date, more better-looking than Kwanisha's, but let's be serious. Neither one of you guys are living good. You live in the backwoods of Florida, swamp territory. You know what I mean? You're back alley trash. Girl, listen. Jackie, Kwanisha, whoever. You can talk about me all day long on YouTube. Girl, I don't even give a damn. Go ahead. Talk about me. Thank you. I appreciate that. But just know this, Kwanisha, or Jackie. I guarantee you, if you saw me in person, face to face, you wouldn't know what the fuck to say. You probably would be starstruck, fanstruck. You wouldn't know what to do. Probably pass the fuck out, roll the eyes back in the head and didn't know what to do. You might just fucking run from me and call the police. But I guarantee you, neither one of you two bitches would say anything, anything that you've said about me to my face or anyone else's face that you come on here on YouTube and talk about. So ladies, meanwhile, while you're talking all about all of us, here on the YT, go have a look in the mirror. Sip some of that hot fucking scolding tea that you call gossip that you guys make up and talk about people on. And you know what I'm saying? Dissect yourselves. Evaluate yourselves. Because the last time I looked at neither one of each channel, you both look like a bunch of old hoes. Come on, Jackie. How old are you? Like 57, 67, trying to make a living off of OnlyFans on YouTube trying to show your raggedy ass. Let's be for real. And Quanisha. Girl, go take some cooking lessons. There's plenty of YouTube videos out here where you can learn how to cook. Better yet, you could probably learn how to wash dishes, be a homemaker, you know what I'm saying? Do your hair properly, you know what I'm saying? Decor. Girl, don't get me started, okay? But anyway, I hope you two lovely ladies of Swampland, Cloud Chasing, have a great day. But you ain't about to get no more of my attention. And if you do, sweetheart, hey, it's just because I ain't got nothing to do. But right now, 
I'm about that life, Jackie. Go ahead and try to get you a bag. Quanisha, do the same. Stop trying to be on here like you living good when you living in a trailer. And Jackie and Quanisha, stop lying. Quanisha, stop lying about your kid's playroom on a trailer. Let me say this. My dad, he lived in a three-bedroom trailer. All single watt trailers are three bedrooms. And they're very tiny rooms. My bathroom is bigger than your bedroom. But... You don't have enough bedrooms to have a playroom. You have three children. And you mean to tell me with three bedrooms, you have all three children in one bedroom while you and black, while you and Backwoods Billy share another bedroom? That's two bedrooms. So then you're going to tell me you're going to use the third one for a playroom? Girl, bye. You can't afford a playroom, let alone a pantry in your home. Have a seat, Quanisha and Jackie, and chill the fuck out before your feelings really get hurt. Now, on that note, let's just get into this real talk, okay? What's up, D-Buzz? What's up, D-Buzz? Y'all already know it's Wednesday. It's real talk time. Time to go. What's up, you guys? I hope you guys are already having a good week. You know what I'm saying? I hope you guys had a great weekend, a good day. You know what it do, what it do, boo. I'm here chilling. I just went ahead and cleaned my area yesterday. You know, I really was going to do some wig videos yesterday. was Sunday. Um, I Look, I, there was a lot of things I was going to do. I was going to do them on Saturday, and then I was like, nah, I don't feel like it. I'm going to just prepare some wigs like, you know, pluck them, style them. And then I was like, I'll do them on Sunday. Then I woke up on Sunday and I started cleaning my little area here, you know, my makeup area and stuff. And then I was like, oh, it's kind of late. It's like 2.30, 3 o'clock. I'm just going to wait until Tuesday to do them. Because y'all know I have my little to-do look, my little to-do list book. I didn't really write anything down for Saturday and Sunday. However, I didn't have no videos that was already up. Yes, my pinky is still, my, st my nails are still not done. Um, let me tell y'all about me. I gotta tell you this. So I cleaned up my little area here. I had went to Ikea this past week with my daughters and I bought like an organizer, kind of like the drawer type thing. It made a huge difference. I had to go through the makeup, throw things away. And you know, time drags on. You be watching YouTube, you watching TV. So, you know, I sit here, I do my makeup and I'm watching TV. So, you know, it just got later and later. And even though I didn't have anything to do or anywhere to go, I just decided I would do them on Tuesday, which is tomorrow. So yeah, what's cause you know today is monday like i always say i do these real talk videos on monday as far as not getting my nails done yet yeah they really need to get done they're looking really really like gross 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 but here's the thing with me i like to go early in the morning they open up at nine o'clock so i'll be sitting here like at 8 45 now mind you they're only like a two minute drive from my house i'm not the type of person to sit around and wait for another person to get their nails done like i don't I don't even want to sit in a nail place as it is. Y'all know this from like prior experience with me and nails. I don't like sitting there. I don't like sitting there. I do not like to sit there and get my nails done. So for me to have to wait for somebody to finish get their nails done and for me to get mine done, it's not about to happen. So I like to be there before everybody else be there. Like I'm there before the people even open the store up. Okay. That's me. Yes. So that way I know that my nail tech Leon is going to serve service my nails before anybody else's. So, you know, I had a lot of things to do last week and appointment and things like that so the time of nine o'clock 8 45 would have not sufficed a girl would have been here like 11 o'clock and i'm not about to sit there with nobody else and wait to get my nails done i figured um tomorrow morning since i don't have anything to do i will get up and take my butt to the nail salon and get them done i really try and i really to honestly just want to be done with them already like i don't know I, I just really don't know how i feel about it. i think that's another reason why i didn't rush back to get them done and though i could have gotten them done this morning i did have a nine o'clock um well i didn't, I didn't have a nine o'clock appointment but they open up at nine o'clock as well so i was at the weight doctor and then after that at 10 15 i had to bring mumsy to her appointment um for her school physical because she's about to start high school next month in august so i figured tomorrow you know i will get up and i will go after i go walking and i did watch I don't, I don't know if a lot of you guys watch jocelyn's cabaret on the zeus network but if you you don't then you, and you don't know about the zeus network or whatever the streaming network it's a really cool network there's not a lot it's not like netflix honey you're not gonna find shows like netflix i don't even believe there's no movies on there they're just like series and shows kind of like the ratchetness of ratchet shows look if you like giggles and laughs then it's perfect okay it's 49 dollars for the entire year you cannot beat that okay sis so i did purchase it like months and months way back and like i said to you on a video guys before i don't really watch the zoo nest the zeus network because it's not like my big thing the only reason why i did buy it or purchase it is because i wanted to watch black china's 
sitcom. And then when I watched that, I did watch like The Real Chance of Love and that was that. So I've never seen season one of Jocelyn's Cabaret until recently. I just watched it. But girl, I've been, I started off watching season two of Jocelyn's Cabaret. Now, you know, on the Zootons Network, you get to see everything. You see in titties, you see in ass, you see in everything. They're showing all of that. Okay. So these are strippers, you know, they trying out for a cabaret and win a big $10,000. Jocelyn is gassing their heads up and making them think like $10,000 is really a lot of money to go home with. Like, girl, what? The last episode, season finale of season two of last night. Girl, listen, if y'all watch Jocelyn's Cabaret, put it in the box below, the comment box below, uh, what y'all thought about last night's final episode. I ain't never been so hyped up from one show, from this one girl, this one particular girl named Yummy, how she just kind of like, she did sneak Miss Natural. Girl, I was like, y'all all need, they all needed to jump that girl at that point. And I'm not even up with the jumping thing, but this girl needed to get her little ass with. You like four foot nine, talking mess. Like, she's talking about she a beast. Girl, like, this was not even my type of show. But for entertainment purposes, it started, you know, it started being really catchy. It started being like, oh, okay, let me watch this. It was something cool to watch. You know what I'm saying? I like Jocelyn Hernandez. She funny as hell. And the strippers was kind of funny, too. Um, but the last episode, girl, oh my god, I wanted to go through the screen knock this little girl out but you know hey y'all watch Dawson's Cabaret put it in the comments below because that show last night was something else if you haven't seen my most recent video my fave five under ten dollars make sure you check that out like you know I'm gonna do a couple promotions not even a couple it's only going to be well, I don't know if it's gonna be one or two but first of all I want to show you all something this is definitely not a promotion but if you guys have an Aldi's grocery store in your area you know, in your town, in your city, your borough, then you know that they do sell wine. They have all different types of wines and all different price ranges. Now, the one that I ran into, I didn't run into, but I seen it on the shelf, was $2.95 by the Winkin' Owl, okay? $2.95, okay? So, what do you think of a $2.95 wine? You're like, girl, please, that's, that's going to taste like straight shit. It ain't going to be worth nothing. Like, come on. Who the hell want to drink a $2.95 wine? I only really drink Moscato. I only really like to to drink Moscato. Well, the first time that I tried this $2.95 wine, there wasn't any Moscato there. So I had to try something else and I really was not keen on it. I really wasn't feeling it. I, I really wasn't too upset because it was only $2.95. So I didn't really waste anything. Well, a couple weeks back, they finally had a Moscato and never knew they was going to, but I seen it. California Moscato, $2.95. This has 8% volume alcohol in it. So it's not really, it's not going to get you drunk like that. But girl, let me tell you something. This is the best two dollars and 95 cents i have ever spent okay for a two dollar and 95 cents wine you get you a little buzz on i mean if you if you're an alcoholic then this is not gonna work for you get you a buzz on honey a nice little buzz on with this two dollar and 95 cent wine now normally i have my little box wines but i was in all these the other day and um i seen that they had Moscato back in stock. If you got all these, check out their little wine selection. That Moscato by Winking Out is really good, girl. Mm -hmm. For $2.95, you cannot beat that. For you ladies who are suffering with hot flashes, because you might be going through that menopause stage, but because I don't have any indoor lady parts, you know, I don't have no fallopian tubes, no uterus, no ovarians, no, none of that. I have none of it, okay? It's gone, okay, gone with the whim. So that that right there has put me into pre-menopause, you know, early menopause. And I go through a lot, like emotionally, um, hot, flashy. I just go through a lot, weight gain, all that stuff. Oh, my little grandson. Oh. Look at that, my little grandson. He's so sweet. I found something that I thought would be really good for hot flashes. I get really hot, and it seems like it's always from right here up. It's never, like, from down here. It feels like a sauna. But I also thought this would be great for when I go on my morning walks in the morning, when it's 95 degrees out here at, at 6 o'clock in the morning. These neck fans. And the one that I did see in Walmart was the one that had a blade in a blade. Just, just two big fan-like blades. $10. I was like, well, I'm going to get this. But then I realized that there was a better one. They didn't have it in Walmart, but I did look on 
um, Amazon. I had like about 10 or 12 of them in my shopping cart because I wanted to read the reviews and the description and each one is different. Like each brand is different. This one was actually like $35, but I ended up getting it 40% off because I guess it's the color. The first one that I did click on was a white one. Same brand, Milto or what is it called? Mito, Mito, whatever you call it. Same brand, but um, it was $36. You know, when you go to Amazon, there's two different colors or other colors at the bottom. So this one was, the white one was $36. Then when you look down at the bottom, there was other colors. So there was a white one that looked like it had LED lights, which was the same price. And those two were, you know, with a coupon clip code was 5% off. Well, when I clicked on the pink one, it said with a 40% clip coupon. So a bitch was like, oh, I'm getting the pink one. But the one thing about them, they're all different. Some of them have different type of megahertz in them. So there's ones that have 2,500 megahertz, then 4,000 megahertz, then 6,000 megahertz. So the, high, the higher the megahertz, the heavier this is going to be. But the battery time usage is going to last longer. These are chargeable. So this one is a 4,000 megahertz because that was the only one that I could find with the airflow vents all throughout the back of the neck. I was so happy to get this when it finally came and Amazon took it. came the next day. I wore it this morning on my walk because it's 95 degrees outside. It's really good for in the house, but outside, let me tell you, when I got back, my whole back of my neck and the whole back of my nape of my hair and my head was soaking wet. I sweat. This damn thing just sits so close to your neck that you don't even feel the airflow from these little slots like wish that it could just sit right here because it seems like when i put it here it gave me the best airflow ever now there are three speeds okay there's the low speed the medium and the high and i mean yeah these are really good like especially if you are like me and you have like hot flashes now did it help me out in the um outdoors this morning you can hear that like, I could feel it like a really nice, cool breeze, but look where I'm at. I'm indoors. Um, but see, this is where it happens. It just keeps flicking down here, and then it sits so close to my neck that I really can't feel the airflow like that. I thought it was a, a good idea. You know, I read reviews for everything. This thing is good, but it all depends on the weather outside, honeys, okay? I would definitely still get one, especially if you suffer from hot flashes. Last but not least, we're gonna get into this, but I did wanna do a short, real quick promo to one of my subscribers here on the YT who is making some really tasty, tasty sauce which is Angry Bear Hot Pepper Sauce. Mm. Angry Bear Hot Pepper Sauce, you guys. Hot, spicy, hot pepper sauce, you guys. Yes. It's all natural, vegan, simple ingredients, freaking, what does it say? No freaking preservatives, no stupid colorants, no fake flavors. Great on everything. But this is definitely true. We did use this at my son Wuzzle's birthday um, because I didn't make homemade tacos. So I do set out a lot of different type of sauces to go with it. I am, I for one am not a huge, huge spicy Either. Like, I don't use hot sauce. I don't use anything spicy, um, only because my tongue seems really sensitive. Back in the days, I would eat hot sauce all day. But now, listen, for you guys who really love it, really, really hot, flaming hot, then you'll definitely love this. It, it's not going to burn your skin off. It's not going to burn your tongue off. My daughter, Mumsy, likes it. She and me have a different tolerance for hot and spicy. You know what I'm saying? She likes those Takis. Those things are hot and nasty. So for somebody like myself, I wouldn't per se use this all the time. But for you guys who love something with some kick and flavor, then this is it. Like, it does taste really good. But girl, my tongue was burning, okay? I'm going to put her website, angrybearsauce.com. She has Instagram and Twitter. And you can use the hashtag angrybearsauce for a chance to get a shout out. But I'll definitely leave the information down below. Hot pepper sauce. Right, no, we're going to jump right into this YouTube Real Talk video. I wasted enough of your time, so we're not going to do a promo because that was the only promo for today. Right, you guys, you already know about Real Talk. If you got a Real Talk that you would like me to answer to and showcase on here, you can send me an email to two at, two, at the two following emails. Muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com or April's Real Talk at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line a Real Talk, you guys. Hello, April. You can call me Nicole. Hope this email finds you well. I am running to you for advice on my new job. 
I am now in my mid-30s, and for the past 15 years, I've had small jobs as an administrative assistant, fairly close to my home. I always wanted more, a good paying job, good benefits, and a place where I can retire comfortably and call home. Long story short, last year during COVID, I started applying for a state job. I have a longtime friend that works for the state and mentioned great pay and amazing benefits and retirement. After applying for almost a year, I started getting calls to interview for different locations. I received a job offer 20 miles away from my home. I didn't hesitate and took the first job offer thrown at me. I figured I'll stick it out for now distance wise and transfer to a closer location later once I'm fully trained. We are three months in and this job is not my cup of tea at all. I was aware from the job posting that due to COVID, the state has a pay cut on all positions. That was fine because I knew it was only temporary, but with the state already starting to open up, the pay cut remains the same. I'm still making chump change for the big responsibility I have with my position. The state pays once a month, and I find myself struggling every month to make ends meet with all my bills. I'm pumping about $60 of gas weekly. It adds up quick. Management had me and another coworker work outside in the hot sun on our feet, screening each customer, making sure they have all documents before they go inside to see a window to our entire eight hour shift. Working outside was never discussed either during interview or job description. So she does this eight hour shift daily and she's been working outside daily. Had I known this, I would have never applied. During our weekly staff meetings, managers keep saying how they are going to start rotating people outside to be fair for all, but never do. This never happens. This job has taken a toll on me physically and mentally. I get home and just want to sleep. I'm neglecting my family because of it. I don't want to be bothered, let alone make dinner and or be intimate with my husband. I've been looking on the state website for different positions, locations, and no jobs have been posted. Am I being too hard on myself about things not working out for me like I hoped for? I used to be such a happy, outgoing person and now I'm miserable all the time and that hurts me deeply. At this point, I am willing to give it all up. It's not worth my mental health and or losing my family over. I haven't quit yet, but it's on my mind for sure. I prefer to have a job lined up first, but don't know how long I can put up with this. Your feedback on my situation is greatly appreciated. Sorry if it's been being too lengthy. XOXO, Nicole. So first of all, Nicole, it's nowhere near lengthy, honey. I appreciate your full detail, okay? And I like this topic. So Nicole, she you know, she has always wanted more in life. She's had, but she's in the mid thirties and for the past 15 years, she's had small jobs such as an administrative assistant, which is close to home. Now for one, I don't really consider being an administrator assistant a small job, Nicole, because, girl, I was administrator assistant for several jobs, okay? And they were not small jobs. Um, it all depends on where you work at as well um, and the load that they have you carry and do. So for my administrator assistant jobs, I was hiring people. I was doing job interviews for them so, to hire people. So I did a lot. And my pay was pretty damn good. And it was very close to home too. However, that wasn't the only one that I've taken on, you know, and it's a step up from secretary girl. Listen, it's a job. I went from administrator assistant to working for the state also in New York, Albany, New York at a Medicaid office. I worked for Fidelis Health Insurance for over 11 years. First, I was just a regular marketing rep. Okay, and then I became senior VP for marketing reps. I was the one that stayed on the longest. Okay, I worked there the longest. I worked that job. It required me to drive to people's homes or meet people out in person or in public or drive to different sites like hospitals, clinics or whatever and make sure that these particular clients had Medicaid with Fidelis. Okay, so this was a really great job for me. It, it, it brought a lot out in me. It, it made me, you know, be a little bit more outgoing. This was before 
YouTube, okay? Um, I still was working that job though and, and YouTube later on down the road. I liked the job, but then it started getting really um, depressing. They started doing this thing um, with numbers, like you gotta meet your quota, you gotta meet your numbers. I can't help it if people don't show up for their appointment. I can't help it if I go to somebody's house and they don't even have all their documents together, okay? I can't, I can't help that. But they started getting really like, it, it didn't even matter about the quality anymore, it was the quantity. And that's how they started becoming like later on down the road, which started pissing me off because I seen other people that um, didn't have neither one quality or quantity. And they were, you know, letting them slide by, but it seemed like certain people they would come after. And me, per se, was one of them. And I think it had a lot to do with the pay. I was told several times I need to become a supervisor because I'm getting paid too much as a marketing rep. So now I need to be a supervisor. I never wanted to be a supervisor. I never wanted to sit in the office all day with those fucking people. That wasn't my cup of tea. It was bad enough I had to go in that office whenever I did go in, you know, because you didn't have to report every week, but I did have to hand in paperwork. But I, I, it was bad enough that when I did have to go in there, I had to be Sarah, you know, fake ass April to these fake ass people. I stuck it out for as long as I could, but this, it really started stressing me out a lot. I would come home some days crying. Um, it started stressing me out a lot. And I was always worried about meeting quota, meeting quota, meeting quota. And, you know, it, it just started really depressing me and stressing me out. And so the day that they fired me, girl, I was so happy. Like, people couldn't believe that I got fired. Like, when I was talking to other reps, they was like, you're lying. You seem too happy. Why the fuck wouldn't I be? Okay, yeah, I'm happy because I can go ahead and get my unemployment. I already have my own business, you know, my website for earrings, and I also was selling wigs, and I was on YouTube, so it wasn't like, you know, a downfall for me. At least I can get the hell away from you guys stressing me the hell out. Nicole, you said that you were only there for two months, I mean, excuse me, three months, and it's already taking a toll on you, and you're probably not going to get unemployment, but here's the thing. Let me, let me just tell you this. Let me just say this. You don't never let a job, don't allow a job, don't let a job stress you the fuck out like that. When you cannot go home and spend time with your family, when you are not able to give attention to your family and to your husband, or cook for them or do things that you know you normally do, and this job is taken away from you, you know, some people may not agree with me, but if it's depressing you and it's messing with your mental health and just your personality, you as a person, why would you allow this to take over you like this? Like straight up. I understand you want to stick it out, girlfriend. I get that. But if it is really fucking with you mentally, emotionally, and also family wise, don't let this job do you like this for one. What your friend might have told you about, oh, not a hot flash. What your friend might have told you, like, oh, the benefits and all of this stuff with working for the stay is great in retirement. That may be so, but let me tell you this, my sweetheart. I have known plenty of people, plenty of people that have worked for the state that they live in, and their complaints are like yours, their complaints are like mine. Your friend might have made it seem that good because maybe that's what they want. Maybe that those benefits and those retirements and those health benefits and all that are good for them because that's them. Maybe they don't have a certain amount of people in their family. You know what I'm saying? Maybe what they're offering for them is good for them. Doesn't necessarily mean it's gotta be good for Nicole. That might be good for them. Doesn't necessarily mean it's good for you, Nicole. One, it's too goddamn hot to be standing outside in the goddamn fucking heat on your feet all day. First of all, it's too motherfucking hot to come and stand outside for any fucking job. I don't give a damn where you live at. That's not the job details. The job did not say that. That was not part of the job description. And also, um, you know, you did say that management keeps saying, well, we're going to start rotating so that way everyone gets a chance to be outside because it's not fair. You damn right it's not fair. Let me tell you. My daughter, Nay, she used to work at, remember she used to work at that store called Aerie, sister company to um, American Eagle. She she worked there for quite a while. A little bit, she worked there for a good, good amount of time. But then when COVID hit, you know, they made my daughter Nay stand outside and tell people that they couldn't come inside yet. You know, how you gotta, there's a limit. So Nay would tell them, well, you need to send somebody else out here because I've been out here for eight hours or I've been out here for five hours. They never would want to change places with Nay, never. She would always be stuck outside. And it's funny because, not it's not funny, but it's crazy because Nay was the only 
black young lady that worked there okay so she finally let it be known what it was going to be after standing out there for like about a couple of months um in the heat now you know it stay hot out here it ain't no summer months like two it's like about uh, 12 months out of the year baby it's like about seven months out of the year where it's fucking hot okay here's the thing you don't never allow a job to take control of your life and make you fucking miserable it's not called giving up it's called putting your priorities in order. Now, I understand that you are fed up and I understand you have a family. Don't let this job dictate your life. Don't let this job take over your life, sweetheart. You wanna look for another job? That's fine. What I'm trying to get you to understand is this. You are not, there's nothing wrong with having another job already lined up before you quit a job. There's definitely nothing wrong with that. People do it that way. Sometimes it don't work out like that though, sweetheart. So don't don't be so hard on yourself. You, you gave it a try. How about this? You can't knock it until you have tried it, okay? The same thing. People was like, oh, don't move to Arizona. Oh, don't move to Arizona. Don't go there. You ain't gonna like it. If I would have listened to all those people because I was about to, I would have never been here. And I love it here. It's beautiful here. It's gorgeous here. I wouldn't have it no other way. You can't knock something until you tried it. And you gave it a shot. You gave it plenty of shots. I never knew that the state only pays once a month because we got paid twice a month, you know, every two weeks. I guess because we are an independent company that works through the state, what Fidelis was. But, um, once a month, honey, girl. And you just said it's chump change. You are kind of being hard on yourself because you've tried it. And you have stated enough things valid to say, girl, leave them alone and find yourself something that's comfortable. You gotta stand outside in the heat. You gotta wait a month to get your paycheck. You gotta spend $240 a month in gas. Come home from work, not cooking nothing for your family. You don't wanna spend no time with your family. You ain't giving up the cookie to your husband. And you don't wanna be bothered with your kids. And you wanna go home and go to sleep. Some people would say, April, no, she should wait to find another job. How's she gonna find another job if she's working this job all the time and then all she do is come home from work and go right to bed so she's tired. So when is she gonna have time to find another job? Let's be real. And she has a husband that I'm pretty sure will provide for her until she finds another job. And how about this one? How about she just leave the job, you know what I'm saying? Give her two weeks notice, okay? And then go hard at looking for another job. That way, she ain't got to worry about going too far, too long without having a job. Don't put yourself in no predicament where you depressed and miserable because of a job, because I've already been there with Fidel. You know, you loathe, you loathe going into work. You, you, you know, you just like, oh, I hate it here. Trust me, I've been there, I've been there. The pay was good though, the pay was good. Okay, I was getting paid $27, 2764 an hour, all right? That pay was good. However, I couldn't take it no more. And I stuck it out for as long as I could. I think I would have left day two when you asked me to stand outside in the motherfucking heat and check the documents of those coming into the building. Because what the fuck do I look like, a doorman to you? They not even trying to do anything about the rotation. I'm pretty sure if you were to give your two weeks, you can look harder for another employment opportunity. And this time, it'll be something that you want and like and, and, and are going to enjoy. I guarantee you. Let's not say administrative assistant is a small job because you never know what company you can work for as an administrative assistant. And also, you can move up. Think of it like that because that's what's happened for me and that's what has happened for many people. I'm pretty sure you ladies will definitely give y'all an opinion, but I think I've held up enough of y'all time. So... I'm gonna go. I love you all. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Good luck, Nicole. Go, go, go.